Female urethral catheterization is a commonly performed medical procedure that allows the direct drainage of the urinary bladder. It may be performed in females of all ages, although most commonly, long-term indwelling catheters are used in older patients or those who are chronically ill. Given that female urethral catheterization is a routine procedure for junior doctors and nurses, it's important that all practitioners have a good understanding of the clinically relevant anatomy prior to performing the skill. We can divide the indications for urethral catheterization into therapeutic indications and diagnostic or monitoring indications. Some of the key therapeutic indications include treating acute urinary retention, for example, due to the presence of blood clots, intermittent urinary bladder decompression in those patients who have neurogenic bladders, or in bedridden patients who benefit from an indwelling catheter for hygiene reasons. Examples of monitoring or diagnostic indications for catheter insertion include monitoring urine output to help guide fluid resuscitation in critically ill patients or in patients undergoing major surgery. And also, in some cases, when undertaking imaging of the urinary tract or when needing to collect an uncontaminated sample of urine. The major contraindication for urethral catheterization in a female is the presence of significant trauma to the lower urinary tract. For example, in patients with urethral trauma and tearing, due to the risk of misplacing the catheter and causing further unwanted damage. In terms of the equipment we need to perform female urinary catheterization, this includes a urinary catheter, which is female in length, and this is typically shorter than those which we use in males, and typically sized between 10 and 12 French. The other things we need are a 10 ml syringe of sterile water for inflating the catheter balloon once correctly inserted into the bladder, a syringe of lidocaine gel for anesthesia and lubrication, sterile gloves, sterile water or antiseptic solution for cleaning, a catheter bag for collecting the drained urine, and finally, a catheter pack, which will include a drape, cotton swabs, a small tray, and a kidney dish. We start by introducing ourselves to the patient checking their name and date of birth, explain the procedure and why it's needed, check for any relevant allergies or contraindications, and finally, obtain informed consent. Given the intricate nature of the procedure, it's important to have a chaperone present at all times. We then ask the patient to lie flat on their back, with their hips externally rotated and their knees flexed and uncover the external genitalia, making sure that we uncover them from the umbilicus down to their knees. Then we can unwrap our equipment whilst maintaining aseptic technique and pour the antiseptic cleaning solution into the small dish. After washing our hands, we then put on our sterile gloves. And after tearing a hole in the middle of the drape, we place the drape over the uncovered area of the patient so that the genitals are accessible via the hole in the drape. Using your non-dominant hand, gently part the labia. We then use the antiseptic soaked gauze to clean around the external opening of the urethra, starting centrally and then moving outwards. Having repeated this cleaning motion two to three times, we can then instill local anesthetic lubricating gel via the urethral opening. Ideally, we should wait at least one minute 
so as to give the lidocaine time to anaesthetise the urethra. After then placing the kidney dish between the patient's legs, we remove the tip of the plastic sheath which contains the catheter. Note that it's really important that we try not to directly touch the catheter with our hands, and instead only touch the sheath. Whilst feeding the catheter out of the plastic sheath, we insert it into the urethra. We continue this until the catheter is successfully introduced all the way to the hilt, at which point urine should begin draining via the hub end of the catheter. And as a result, it should pass into the kidney dish that we'd placed between the patient's legs. If urine doesn't immediately drain, try applying pressure onto the bladder, as this should initiate drainage. We can then inflate the catheter balloon using the syringe via the specific balloon port, which will specify the amount of volume of sterile water that's needed to fully inflate the balloon. Whilst inflating the balloon, ensure that you observe the patient's face to make sure that they don't show any signs of discomfort, as this could indicate that the tip of the catheter and the balloon may be incorrectly positioned. Having inflated the balloon, we then remove the syringe and attach a catheter bag. And we then gently pull the catheter until resistance is felt. And this will indicate that the tip of the catheter and the balloon are correctly positioned at the bladder neck. We can then recover the patient. In cases where the catheter is meeting resistance during attempted insertion, it's important that we don't force the catheter. Instead, gently rotate the catheter anticlockwise and clockwise until it successfully passes. If you're struggling to identify the urethral meatus, then a good tip is to ask the patient to bear down, as this can help identification of the meatus a lot easier. If you're still unable to successfully pass the catheter, then it's important that you ask help from a senior, as in the most challenging cases, where urethral catheterization hasn't been possible, the patient may actually require a suprapubic catheter. Following the successful insertion of the catheter, and after ensuring the patient is well, we need to make sure that we document the procedure in the patient's notes. This should include the indication, informed consent, the size of the catheter used, the residual volume of urine within the bladder, and also any immediate complications that may have occurred. The potential complications that we need to be aware of following female urethral catheterization include urinary tract infections and sepsis, hematuria, pain and discomfort from the presence of the catheter, and finally, urethral trauma and stricture formation. <laughs>